Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Ryan Mathis this morning. He's Vice President of Commercial Strategy at Polarity TE. He's joining us on Health Professional Radio to talk about Skin TE. It's an innovative alternative for treatment of chronic wounds. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Ryan Mathis. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Neil. Give our listeners a bit of your professional background and talk a little bit about how your clinical experience as a doctor has led to your, your role there at Polarity TE. It's funny. I, I, my entire life, I wanted to, to be in the clinical uh, field of, of medicine from high school when I was uh, doing a youth apprenticeship program and leaving uh, to all the way through medical school. And, and I ended up doing my, my plastic surgery residency at Georgetown, where I, uh, I had exposure to limb salvage um, clinics, which... I uh, took care of a, a disease state called diabetic foot ulcers mainly and, and tried to prevent amputation. Mm-hmm. Uh, there I had some great mentors who really got me passionate about about the uh, field. You mentioned diabetic foot ulcers. What are diabetic foot ulcers? How do they form? Yeah, that's, it, it's, a tough, it's a tough problem. Diabetic foot ulcers, uh, they, they're caused by vertical or sheer movement of the foot. Mm-hmm. And patients with diabetes often ha- have a what's called peripheral neuropathy or difficult with sensation. And so they're unable to adjust normally throughout the day. So they develop these wounds. The downside of the wounds is there's a tremendous risk of, of amputation. Um, and that amputation is directly um, correlated with, with mortality rates. And, and not just the, the outcomes and the mortality, that's not, that's not even the biggest problem. There's also a tremendous burden on the healthcare system because of the number of patients that have this. As diabetes numbers grow, mm-hmm. these grow in correlation with them. And, and about a million to three and a half million people uh, in the United States alone have had a diabetic foot ulcer and thus have been at risk for an amputation. What is it about these particular wounds that make them so hard to heal? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. With, with um, diabetes comes a whole, a whole slew of really uh, difficult comorbid issues. One of the main ones in diabetic foot ulcers is um, the inability to get good blood flow down to mm-hmm. those ulcers themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, because blood flow can't come in, about 17 of these wounds end up getting infected, um, which makes them incredibly difficult to heal and, and it extends their hospital course and also extends the, the amount of time that it takes to get these wounds to heal. Um, so currently about... Uh, and amputations occurring about every 20 seconds in the world, and these ulcers are occurring every 1.2 seconds because so many of these become infected and so many of these recur. So are we talking about if they were just given the ability to heal, or are we talking about better treatment for a chronic condition? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a tough question. You know, ideally, it's, it's a two-pronged approach when, when treating these. So you want to optimize everything you can. With, with diabetes, that peripheral blood flow um, can, you know, you can, you can do vascular procedures to improve that, and oftentimes it's in, that's in conjunction, but we still need better treatments at the wound themselves. Mm-hmm. Current treatment um, methods are, are, are mostly allogeneic, uh, meaning from a, a, another individual, and are focused on improving the wound environment and getting the wound to contract in through through scarring. And that may be the reason that, that recurrence rates are, are 40% at a year and 90% at 10 years is you're healing with non-native tissue. With, um, with skin to you, what we're, what we're working to develop is an autologous product, meaning it's from that patient itself. And, and rather than just improving the wound environment, we're putting uh, back essentially micro cellular segments or segments of, of their own skin mm-hmm. with cells that, that have been activated that allowed this wound to kind of heal from the inside out in addition to the outside in. Uh, that, that gives them a leg up on healing. Um, and it, you know, we're hoping that it gives them a leg up in healing. And as we move through uh, clinical trials and progress, uh, progress uh, through the FDA and, and, and in communication with the FDA, we're excited uh, with uh, what's on the horizon. Now, is skin TE going to be applied as a as an adhesive, as a covering? Is it in a gel that's like um, put inside the wound, as you said, healing from the inside out? How exactly is it going to be administered? Yeah, the the product itself once it once a small uh, piece of skin is taken from the patient, say on a Monday, 
it's overnighted to Salt Lake City where it's processed into these these uh, microcellular segments. And that is then combined back with the native tissue to form a paste-like mm-hmm. solution. Um, that paste is, is received back by the physician on a Wednesday, so it's a 48-hour turnaround. The, the patient would go in on a Monday, come back that Wednesday. They, the paste would be applied sort of like icing on a cake over the wound itself. Um, it gets dressed with dressings currently used in standard of care. Um, and over the course of, of time, the, the, patient, uh, the patient's wound, these micrographs give, give this wound with poor vascular flow, you know, potentially the ability to have an optimized graft for, for engraftment, meaning that graft is, can grow in the middle of the wound um, rather than just allowing the outsides to heal in. Much better than a synthetic application that attempts to do the same thing? We're hoping to uh, show in our clinical trials that, that there's an improvement, not just in the ability to heal these wounds, and usually the landmark in this, in this space is, is at the 12-week mark. Um, with our randomized controlled trial, we, we had 70% healing versus, versus 30, around 30% healing in the standard of care um, on a 100-patient series in Wagner-1 diabetic foot ulcers. Addition, in addition to, to that healing rate, we also want to reduce that 40 and 90 percent recurrence. And so we, um, we're we hoping to, to show the trial long-term durability and tolerance so we can get these patients back to their normal lives. What about other wounds such as uh, bed sores, uh, pressure wounds that aren't necessarily due to diabetes? Pressure injuries are one of the most difficult things to treat clinically. And, and it's something that, um, all, you know, as a as a surgeon, you know, with, with those pressure injuries that you're, you're looking at a pretty, pretty poor prognosis, which makes it a, a difficult wound um, to, to take on as a physician. Uh, and it affects about 2.5 million people a year. The same way as diabetic foot ulcers, it's caused by pressure of, of a patient that's either bed bound, chair bound, or unable to, to move. Maybe they have um, a respiratory infection that's causing them to be ventilated. Once these wounds heal, they, they can become incredibly uh, deep, going all the way down to the bones of the, of the back and the, and the pelvis. And, um, and they can only heal by offloading that, that wound and then optimizing that wound environment. So it's a, you know, it's a huge cost to the healthcare system at, at you know, over $26.8 billion is just on pressure injuries alone. And so there's an opportunity with, uh, me- with the mechanism of action of this product uh, to really be potentially uh, applied across uh, a broad spectrum of a- uh, applications similar to that. Talk about some of the short-term goals for Polarity TE as a, as a company, if you would. We're excited that as, as we progress through the FDA pro- uh, process, our, our flagship product, Skin T, is currently on track for IND submission this year for the treatment of diabetic foot ulcers, um, 1 to 10 uh, square centimeters. Uh, additionally, we're, we're pursuing uh, diabetic foot ulcers that are greater than 10 centimeters, so it's really, really difficult to heal diabetic foot ulcers, and stage 4 pressure injuries as well as acute wounds. So we have a We've got a lot on our plate, but it makes for it makes for a fun working environment and an excellent team here at Polarity uh, to execute on those things. So uh, we have a, a exciting exciting time upcoming, and and really appreciate your your time and and uh, and we're, we're hopeful to make a, a large impact here. Well, give us a website where our listeners can learn more about Polarity TE. Sure, the website is www.polaritye.com. We'd love to hear any questions or, or thoughts. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio, Ryan. Hopefully we'll speak again. Thanks for joining. Thank, thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Ryan Mathis, Vice President of Commercial Strategy of Polarity TE. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.